and welcome back to the 20th episode of WCAT Chats. I'm Alex Carr, joined alongside by Palmer Ruth, and we have two girls lags players, Kate Collier and Kate Quigley, here to join us on this Wednesday morning. So how is y'all's morning doing? It's, it's good. Thanks rushed. for having us. Mm -hmm. So you guys just came off of a, a win against Love It uh, this Monday. You guys beat them 11-6. What was that game like playing against the uh, school rival? Well, we knew it was going to be a big game, so we tried to come out, you know, strong, stronger than we had been playing, and I think we accomplished that. Yeah, I think first half it was a little bit closer than we wanted, and we found our energy in the second half, and we're really able to look for cutters and connect more offensively mm -hmm. in the second half. Yeah. So far, how would you say the season's been going? It's been a challenge, but, you know, nothing we can't learn from or overcome and we've been getting better last two wins they were good taught us some things so. yeah I think we've had a harder schedule this year than we ever have and to me that's really exciting and I like you know getting tested and I think we play our best against the hardest teams and so our you know record hasn't isn't as great as it usually is but I think we've been able to get a lot better and then we'll be playing some smaller teams for state which will be nice yeah, this and, you know, it's <laughs> so what do you guys think your team's strength is, like um, either your offense or defense or something like that? I would say we're a really drive-heavy team. We have a lot of good drivers, and we're working on, you know, scoring more assisted goals. And then I think yeah. our team is really fast um, with Madison, Townsend in the midfield, and mm -hmm. then – both of us in the midfield, we just play a fast game. Um, and then we're working on keeping the energy up on the bench and just hyping everyone up more. Yeah, I would think so. Usually we have a really good defense, but that's been a little bit shaky recently. But it's still pretty strong. And what would you say are the goals for the rest of the season, both as a team but also individually? Mm. Um, I think we want to do, I think we want to really make a run for state this year. Um, I think it's looking like Fellowship and Pace are the two people that we're going to want to beat. And we beat Fellowship in overtime earlier this season and lost a tough one to Pace last week. Mm -hmm. And I think something special about this season is that everyone's really close and the seniors, especially for me, I want to play for them and I really want to, you know, win this if we can this year for them. Yeah, totally. Full potential for state, but like connecting more, you know, just working as a team. We're we're a really close knit team, so I think that's to our advantage. And so far, you guys have played thirteen games. Which one has been your favorite to compete in, or either on the field or with teammates off? I think Roswell. Um, we ended up losing by two, but we honestly fared better than. I was thinking and we went into it really excited and they're a tough 6A, 7A, I'm not sure, team and they had some good commits who we were researching and then I think we just, everyone gave it their all, went 100% into every 50-50 ball and I think that was a really fun game. I would say the same, like we really wanted to win that game and we knew like we had the full potential too. So we just played our hearts out and gave it our best shot. Now, going back, I don't know, maybe 10 years, but you'll tell me, when did you and how did you kind of first get interested in playing lacrosse? For me, I grew up up north, so that's kind of a lacrosse hotspot, and so pretty much everyone was starting, and I started probably when I was seven or eight, and both my parents played lacrosse in college so, and soccer, so both soccer and lacrosse got introduced to pretty young. I started in first grade, it's kind of like her, but my dad played and he really enjoyed it and wanted to get me into it. And when did you guys get that moment when you realized you wanted to play lacrosse competitively and at the next level? Um, I think for me it was really about how much I fell in love with the game. I mean, I became so obsessed with it that I really focused on like hitting the wall and getting my stick skills better and then hills for speed and things like that. And then once I saw my work kind of coming to fruition on the field, I just realized that like, if I wanted to, I could, I guess. Connor. Mm. Oh. Yep. I was researching a different question. But both of you 
have older brothers, right, who both play sports and are competitive. Is there almost like a rivalry between your older sibling and seeing who can maybe do better in their game? Or Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Say a little bit, but, you know, he does great. Love him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let, me, let me think of a question. Um, you want to do the advice for like a... No, I have one. What would you say is your greatest strength on the cross field, personally? For me, I'd say the draw, just because I, I like, I so love it, and it's so much fun for me. And I feel like I can place it well, and then, you know, Kate and Madison or Kate or whoever else is on the circle can, you know, scoop it up and go. Um, I think for me it's my speed. Mm -hmm. I use it a lot, especially between like the 30s, and then I play really aggressively, which sometimes my, my teammates know. Sometimes I maybe take it too far, but I think that's what really is my strength. And has there been a coach that's been the most beneficial to your game? I would say Batch. Um, he's always there to work with me and help me if I need it, and I can always come into his office and he looks through the film, you can tell he's really passionate about making everyone better and he takes a lot of time, you know, looking over film and giving us pointers and I think that's really helped me out. Yeah, he's so like into the game and he knows us that he'll, you know, he'll, he'll, he's watching and so he'll come over and tell us what to do and encourage us and lift us up. Yeah. How do y'all balance not only obviously going to an academically intensive school, but also playing sports? How do you balance your workloads? I, I mean, like this year especially, like I don't have that much work after school, <laughs> so I'll just get it done when I get home. I think I take advantage of my free periods a lot, and I'm in the library almost every single time, <coughs> and I just try to get as much work done as possible at school. And are there any younger players on the team that you think can have a bright future in the game? I think all our freshmen are really strong players, Colby Frieden especially. She's just got so much like drive in her. Yeah, I would say the same. We have a ton of underclassmen talent. I mean, Kate, obviously, um, Madison in the midfield, and then Izzy Banks, our goalie, mm -hmm. I think is only getting better. And then Colby, of course, really good defender. Do any of you all have any, any pre-game you know, routines or superstitions that you go by? I wear my left sock inside out and my right sock regularly every game. I don't really have anything. How did that sock thing start? <laughs> I think I just psyched myself out and thought that maybe I would like get injured if I didn't do it one day and then I it's kind of a stressful thing but now I do it every game. And do you guys have like a post game like if you guys win ritual or anything like that? If we lose, we go to Willie's and eat a quesadilla and kind of let it all out yeah. for a night. <laughs> yeah. That's that's only if it's like a hard loss, though. You know, I don't actually think I've ever heard of a losing tradition yeah. before. So that's <laughs> it just a, makes you feel good, even if you lose. Do uh, you know who came up with that tradition? I think, old. Yeah, I think it's pretty old. Yeah. Wow. All right. Um... And what do you think has been the biggest setback or like an obstacle you guys have had, uh, you guys have faced as a lacrosse player? I think just being from the South and playing lacrosse in Georgia, it's much harder to like get in front of colleges. And I think it's just, there's a bias in general. Mm -hmm. And then when you go up North and play people from up North, you just have to work harder. And, but it just makes you, I think it makes you more humble and aggressive anyways. Yeah. I'd probably say similar, like just like the, the club you play for, where you're from, people already have like ideas about you. And so you just got to show them differently, show them how you play. Well, that transitions right into the question I'm about to ask. Kate, how was your recruiting process and how did you eventually land on going to play for Columbia? Yeah, so for me, honestly, my recruiting process went exactly how I wanted it to. Um, I was interested in Columbia before I even thought about lacrosse, and to me, it's all about the school there. And um, you can be contacted by schools September 1st of your junior year, and they contacted me at midnight on September 1st, and then I went up to campus next week, and they were my number one, and I was theirs, and that was kind of it. Wow. Now, 
even like playing for club, do you have any good moments of playing just lacrosse in your lifetime, not even just for Westminster? Just any favorite moments? I think my freshman year, um, playing at Westminster against BT, who's one of our rivals. Well, I don't know if they consider us their rivals, but um, my freshman year, um, I was already kind of put into a spot where I had some responsibility, and I remember I got hit really hard, and I was in the air, and I still took a shot, and then I fell, and I scored somehow, and that was just a really happy moment, <laughs> freshman year. Well, okay. so I think my favorite was my eighth grade year. I was playing for the Walton Feeder team, and I loved that team so much, and I loved the coach, and it was just like such a happy memory and like bittersweet moment that um, like in the championship in the last season, I was, you know, not going to play with them again. But it was a good feeling to know that we still keep up with each other and it's a great team still. So on that team. And if you guys could go back and give yourself uh, your younger self some advice, what would you say? I think I would tell myself to celebrate more. Even now I'm kind of working on that because – one of the ways I stay sort of locked into the game is when I score, I kind of act the same as if I missed. And I just think celebrating is fun and it gets other people excited. And I think, I just wish I would have done a little bit more. I would tell myself like in my game to be more aggressive. Like that's something still I'm working on, like going for the ground ball, even if you might give up defensive position or something like that. And just try to, you know, Play as hard as you possibly can for each game. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and good luck for the rest of this year and the rest of your lacrosse career. Thanks for thank having you. us. All right, thank you, guys. thank you, Kate and Kate, so much for joining us. And now we'll turn the ties a little bit, and we'll go, go on to the rest of Westminster sports. Last night, the Westminster varsity baseball team unfortunately fell to the Holy Innocents Golden Bears, I believe. That's right? what I was calling them. Yeah, so, um, I mean, it was a very close game, one of the most exciting ones I've ever seen. Um, fortunately, we fell 8-6, to six, but, I mean, we get to play again this Thursday, go to their field now, and we'll see how it goes. What did you see? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much what up. <laughs> Can I say that McBurney struggled with control? No, not you don't, don't, yeah. don't talk about that. Just be like, It was an exciting game, both fans and dugouts were in. Yeah, it was a really exciting game, so much fun to watch. I mean, the energy around the ballpark, not only the Westminster fans, but also the Holy Innocence fans were getting into it, and both dugouts were riled up and energetic. I mean, probably the best high school baseball game I've watched. Yeah, and also the Holy Innocence girls soccer team was playing Westminster girls soccer team just on the field next uh, next to uh, the Westminster baseball field. So the highs girls came on over and rooted for their team, so it was getting kind of loud out there. And mm -hmm. talking about girls soccer, the uh, Westminster team beat Highs 5-2 to two yesterday, and they play Love It tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, you feel like almost every Westminster sports team, as you hear, either has played Love It this week or plays Holy Innocence this week. So you're going to see a lot of them on campus. Hopefully Westminster can come out on the better end of both of those battles. And the boys lacrosse team, who's currently 8-5, and five, beat Whitfield this uh, last Sunday at b by 19-8, to eight, which is... It's such a high-scoring game, and they play. They also play Love It tonight, which will be a uh, a fun little rivalry. Mm -hmm. And then on Tuesday, they Maris comes here, so that's a really great game. Should be a lot of fun to watch. Is that this Tuesday or next Tuesday? Well, this Tuesday already happened. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It's like, like a no, like a week. Oh, huh. so. But it's before next episode. Oh, okay, I, don't know. I didn't think about that, yeah. All right, uh, the girls across team, they beat Love It uh, Monday 11-6. to six, Exactly. And they play Mountain Brook next Tuesday, yep. so make sure to watch out for the girls across team. Yeah, I mean, Mountain Brook team coming over from Birmingham, Alabama to go play and make sure to go and watch, you know, Kate and Kate. Mm -hmm. See that electric duo up there. And the boys' tennis team, they beat Woodward yesterday for senior night and had a great ceremony before all the seniors and – uh, their teammates got to play. Yeah, they certainly did. And obviously they won against Woodward last night. And then they play Marist tonight for their last match of the regular season before the region tournament. So a last tune-up match so that they can get ready to go. Uh, and the girls' tennis, they also played Woodward for senior night. 
And, uh, I mean, all the seniors were able to play, and they won 3-2 to two with a comeback win from Riley Sager and Kate Lockerman to seal the win. And then you know Kate Lockerman. I mean, she's been on the podcast with you a couple of times. She's the one who wrote her name on this sheet with the prep, actually. So she's quite proud for a win, and hopefully she can keep that up again going into the region tournament. And then jumping back up, boys soccer. They also play Love It tomorrow, so I believe at 6 o'clock is the girls' game. 7.45 is the guys' game at the stadium. I'm sure it's gonna, a lot of people are going to be there. Verse Love It, Battle of the Buckhead. You know, Westminster so far, I believe, is on the better side of things, so hopefully we can keep that up. Mm-hmm. And also the JV boys baseball team. Exactly. Uh, they play Love It tonight, which will be a lot of fun. Last time we played them, we did mercy rule them. Complete game. So, you know, we'll see how we do it again. But I, I feel like we'll mm-hmm. – we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, topple the Lions one more time. Speaking of toppling the Lions, that's exactly what gymnastics did on Monday where they went up against Love It and Pace and they came away with the dub. Yeah, I mean, gymnastics team looking very good. Um, mm-hmm. They have a meet tonight against Mount Vernon, so yeah. we'll see how they go uh, and compete. Uh, yesterday I saw their practice and honestly, I can't believe how people do what they do. I mean, I can hardly do a cartwheel and they're doing full flips in the air and backhand swings. It doesn't make sense to me. It does not. The track, uh, over the weekend, they set a new guy's 4x4 four four record and a girl's 4x2 record. So, I mean. Good job. Running fast. I mean, it, they're early in the season, but they're still beating. I know the 4x2, same girls who had the prior record. So they're even faster than they were last year. So great to see that. And then moving over to the water. The crew team had their first regatta versus, I believe, Baylor at Lake Lanier yesterday. The JV8 beat Baylor, which I heard going in was their goal, so it was great to see that. And then this weekend, they go up to Fairfax for one of the bigger regattas of the year, so good luck then. And that is all for sports around the Westminster campus. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, I'm Alex Carr. That's Paul Maruth. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a good day. Go Cats.